Welcome to Mrs. Jamo's Joyful Reading Corner. Let's turn on our imaginations as we read St. Patrick's Day by Joyce K. Kessel Pictures by Kathy Gilchrist St. Patrick's Day by Joyce K. Kessel Pictures by Kathy Gilchrist St. Patrick's Day is March 17th. It is celebrated all over the world, wherever there are people of Irish background. Some people celebrate by wearing green. Others celebrate by going to church. Still others celebrate with parties. Some cities even hold parades. People have been celebrating St. Patrick's Day for nearly 1,600 years now. It all began, of course, with St. Patrick himself. Patrick is Ireland's patron saint. He changed the history of Ireland, and he is well-loved by the Irish people. But Patrick was not born in Ireland. He was born in England between the years 372 and 390. His parents did not even name him Patrick. We think they named him Maywin. Patrick's parents were Romans. At that time, the Romans ruled England. Roman cities in England had shops, churches, and beautiful houses. People read books. They dressed in fine cloth gowns. Calphurnius, Patrick's father, was a high Roman official, so Patrick lived a rich and comfortable life. But just across the Irish Sea, in Ireland, Life was not so comfortable. People lived in mud huts. They dressed in animal skins. They could not read. Ireland was called Air in those days. The Romans did not rule Air. It was ruled by tribal kings who would not let the Romans in. The Irish did not like the Romans. They did not like the Roman religion either. The Irish believed in other gods. They did not want to become Christians like the Romans. When Patrick was a boy, the most powerful king in Ireland was named Niall. In the year 400, King Niall attacked England. He took thousands of prisoners. He wanted them for slaves. Patrick was one of them. Patrick was taken to Northern Ireland. There he was sold to another king named Maluk. The rich little Roman boy was forced to herd pigs and sheep. After a fine, rich life, Patrick became a swineherd. Maluk and his family were not unkind to Patrick. Maluk's children were good company. There was plenty of food. Still, Patrick was only 15 years old. He was all alone in a strange land he didn't know the language. He didn't even know if his family was still alive. There were no beautiful houses, no shops, no books. Patrick slept in a mud hut. He was only a little slave boy, far from home. At first, Patrick was frightened. Then he became filled with a great sadness. He began to think and dream all the time. He began to sleep outdoors. Only rocks protected him from the winter wind. Like the sheep, he didn't seem to feel it. Like the pigs, he roamed the valleys. He prayed day and night, and his prayers seemed to protect him from the cold. The little slave boy became one of the great religious dreamers of all time. Soon, he began to have wonderful dreams. The dreams told him to escape. One day, Maluk's children could not find him. The animals were astray. The slave boy was gone. Patrick was then about 21 years old. After six years as a slave, he had run away. He walked many miles to the sea. There he found a ship. It took him back to England but he was not ready for what he found. His country was in ruins. The Romans had been chased out. 
they were no longer the rulers. It is said that Patrick then wandered all through Europe. Everywhere he found the same thing. The Romans had been chased out. Then, in the year 410, the mighty city of Rome, the center of all Roman power, was conquered as well. To Patrick, it was like the end of the world. His past was really dead. He had nowhere to go. His God sent him no more dreams. Though it was dangerous, Patrick decided to go back to England. He lived very quietly there. All he did was pray and think. One day, another voice came to him. It said, Holy youth, we beg thee to come and walk once more among us. Patrick was certain that God was calling him back to Ireland. Wild Ireland, land of magical mists and green. Patrick had almost forgotten it. Now he remembered the beautiful land and how much he had loved the people. It all came back like a spell. Suddenly, Patrick knew what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to bring all those tribes together. He was supposed to make Ireland a Christian land. Patrick was sure of it. But first, there was work to do. Patrick went to France. For the next ten years, he studied religion there. During all that time, he thought of Ireland. He never forgot the voice in the dream. In the year 432, Pope Celestine made Patrick a bishop. The Pope named him Patricus. Patricus is the Latin word for Patrick. Now, at last, Bishop Patrick sailed for Ireland. But his mission was not easy. The Irish people turned him away. They tried to stone him to death. Patrick and his men fled to the sea again. Some time later, they returned to shore. They found a barn and went to sleep there. The barn belonged to a king named Dihu. Dihu thought Patrick and his men were robbers. He wanted to kill them. But when he saw Patrick, Dihu could not move. Patrick held out his hand and smiled. Something wonderful shone in his face. Dihu put down his weapon. Even his fierce dog stopped growling. It may not have happened exactly like that, but that is how the story has been told. Dihu became the first Christian in Ireland. His barn became the first church. Not everyone in Ireland was happy to have Patrick back. There were many people who hated Patrick's religion. They stoned Patrick. Once, they even put him in chains. But Patrick always escaped. He traveled all over Ireland. The stories say he always had a drummer with him. When he came to a village, the drummer would drum and the people would come running from their houses. Then they would listen to him. Patrick talked about one God. This seemed strange to the Irish people. They had always believed in many gods. Patrick showed them a shamrock. A shamrock is like a three-leafed clover. Then Patrick explained the idea of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today, the shamrock is Ireland's national flower. More and more people were becoming Christians. More and more Irish kings were becoming Christians too. As they came together to worship, the Irish people began to come together as a country too. Patrick built hundreds of churches in Ireland. He spent the rest of his life watching over them. When he died on March 17th, between the years 461 and 492, the church buried him at Downpatrick in Ireland. The church also made him a saint. Patrick had lived out his dream. Ireland had become one country under one God. There are many legends about St. Patrick. 
It is said that he got rid of all the snakes in Ireland. By beating his drums, he frightened them into the sea. It is said that he raised his father from the dead. They say the people fed Patrick poison, but he did not die. They say that Patrick could make snow burn. They say that the sun would not set when Patrick died. It shone in the sky for 12 days and nights. It would not make a new day without him. They say that the fish rise from the sea each March 17th. They pass before Patrick's altar, then disappear. St. Patrick's Day has become a holiday in both the U.S. and Canada. It is a day of fun and parties. But March 17th is more serious in Ireland. There is some singing and dancing, but for most Irish people, it is a holy time. People fill the churches for three days. The first St. Patrick's Day in North America was held in Boston in 1737. Now there are parades in many large cities. Thousands of people find some way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Some only wear green, some also dance and sing Irish songs. But wherever Irish people may be, they feel a little homesick on March 17th. A few tears mix with their laughter. Wild jigs change into sad songs and back again. Others feel the sadness and the joy. They want to be a part of it. On St. Patrick's Day, almost everyone seems to be a little bit Irish. The end. Thanks for listening.